Hello, everybody. Sorry for the little bit of a delay. I know we had the uh, intro time go for a little bit longer, but we had to work on getting uh, all the teams in and getting all the coin flips and all the map bands done. I am your gracious host, Yep, and tonight, for his very first debut cast for Nexus Gaming Series, I am proud to present Taryn to the co-cast chair. Hey, hey, yep, so happy to be here. Excited to watch some really, really, hopefully, intense gameplay for Heroes of the Storm here on this Saturday. Uh, Division A West Clash between Baby Makers versus Archetype. So really stoked for some 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 misplays. I want to see some 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 steals, some backdoor action. <laughs> I want to see some choga. We'll see. Let's see what we get today. I'm really excited. Yeah, well, so far, you know, just kind of based on some of the homework we did earlier, uh, you know, just kind of give you guys the uh, map bands and all that wonderful information. Um, we have, from coming from Archetype, we have a Braxis Holdout being banned. And then we have, from Baby Makers, Dragonshire being banned. And whereas tonight, the map picks are going to be Towers of Doom, which came from Archetype. And then we have Battlefield of Eternity as our game number two. Just bear with me. I missed one little excerpt that I needed, which is uh, to put the maps on. So please stand by, good sirs. Now, with these two maps, what I'm I'm most excited for is, you know, I Baby Makers I have seen play before, but I'm not as familiar. I know that they're a team that you follow and you know quite well. Um, and I'm archetype is pretty new to me. So uh, what I've been looking at here for me is are the trends in league play in the 2018 uh, phase two of the HGC because we all know that pro play, you know, to a, a pretty heavy de have a, a heavy degree, really kind of influences um, amateur the amateur scene. And so I'm expecting. Uh, as far as most picks, Malfurion to be contested, yeah. Phoenix, Johanna, Blaze, and Muradin, uh, I think will be very high priorities on this map. And so what do you, what do you think that we should expect here coming out of the Baby Makers? Um, well, kind of based off the information I picked up from the Statues of the Storm, shout out to Foundrith for putting that together, we can see potentially a Deckard Cane coming out. Um, Tychus is also another strong pick for Baby Makers. Um, and usually some sort of mage that I've seen. It could be a Gul'dan, a Kel'Thuzad. Um, however, you know, the thing about towers is, you know, I kind of feel like you need, like, a really strong mobile group. You need to have, like, I'd probably say at least a strong solo laner to be able to at least cap capture, uh, you know, one of those three towers on his own, or at least stall it. So it could be a, a different draft from what we're uh, typically seeing from uh, Baby Makers here. Yeah, it looks like Archetype is thinking about that mobility as well, banning out the Maiev. Uh, Baby Makers are going to come in with that white main ban as well as the Genji. They are also targeting targeting that mobility, but they want to just remove white main from the game right now. She's really strong, um, very quick heals, and can be a, very, a big nuisance um, uh, in the meta currently. So yeah, they want to mitigate mobility remove uh, white main uh i'm interested to see if they let rainer through here because rainer is still considered very yeah strong. i mean asmo still too i mean actually they get rid of diablo asmo and rainer right now are both on the table let's see i'd like to see maybe an asmo play here well okay asmo is not in as far as the hgc or league play is concerned abrather wow come in with the dahaka pick not surprised there and then we have followed up from Archetype, Asmo, Dunk, and Joanna. Like you said, Asmo recently reworked. Very, very strong. And Joanna also uh, seeing a lot of play right now in the current meta. Deckard Kane. Now, now you mentioned before that Baby Makers would have a special uh, eye out for that Deckard Kane. Uh, give me some insight on that. Yeah, well, according to Stats of the Storm, at least for uh, round one, uh, I can tell you Stoney, who uh, seems to be their support, seems to be very fond of Deckard, seeing as the majority of his games were played on Deckard Kane. Um, the Savannah's pick coming out, though, is kind of makes me curious. I mean, this isn't really kind of like a... I mean, she's not really like a solely in presence anymore. You know, you should, I would see her in the four-man, so, so I don't know. But we have a Garage coming out from 
archetype, which isn't to be unexpected. It seems to be whittling down tanks. Yeah, they're getting rid of Garage again. A huge nuisance. And Alex Straza, that life binder, really uh, impactful with hu uh, healer, uh, tanks with huge health pools, like your Joranas, your Diablos. Already have the Joanna, but again, even with an Artanis, that can be incredibly significant in a team fight. So just want to get that uh, get that out of there, out of the roster. Yeah. Um, seems like somebody's been doing their homework, and I like to see that. I like to see that uh, teams come in ready, prepared, and, and excited to win. Archetype picking up that Malfiel and the Cassia. Cassia to counter the Rainer that is still left through. Really smart pick up there by the Archetype. Yeah, and based on my homework from earlier, I can tell you that most likely so is going to be on the Cassia and Odin will be on the Malfiel. Those are two very strong picks coming out from um, Archetype. In fact, the Cassia, the player on the Cassia, has 100% win rate in NGS with Cassia. Oh, wow. Oh, man. So sick plays. Super excited to see these, but they don't go with that Rainer. They counter it with the Kael'thas, who I think is underrated right now as a mage. Very strong. Uh, Rhaegar going to come in as that last pick for Archetype. And I really love Baby Makers. I really love what they've drafted here. Kind of more my style. We'll see what that Sylvanas can do as far as being able to take camps, keep that wave clear, pushed. Uh, as far as holding the towers... I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who. I think I might favor Archetype here with that Asmo. Uh, but I don't know. Can't underestimate Kale's here and Dahaka's global presence on this map. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of indifferent to the, the draft for the most part. I mean, I do like the Kale. I feel like if they if Baby Makers does do um, what they need to do correctly, then everything will kind of work out okay. But at the same time, the later the game goes... Asmodee is just going to be that much more of a threat, especially the you know the higher stacks go, and you know when he has those late game stacks, you know one dunk onto a Kalthos is just going to leave him, you know, just battered down. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I feel like Kale, his range. I'm a big, big uh, Kale player, um, and. I just I can't see him really being in trouble with the draft that Archetype has put together here. Um, I I really don't think that he's a problem. So I, to me, it feels like a really really strong pick and a really smart pick, honestly. All right, so getting into the game here, representing hey. on the blue team, we are going to have Baby Makers. And so, with this awesome lineup, we are going to have Wallens on the Dahaka, Fireblade on the Murr Steve, Slobo Laggins on the Kael'thas, Amy Wan Kenobi on the Sylvanas, and last but not least, Stony on the Deckard Kane. And for Archetype on the red side, we're going to have Virtuoso on that Joanna, uh, uh, Raynoris on that Rhaegar. Odin on Malthale, Solo, Solo on Cassia, and uh, this is this is gonna be pretty. Oh, and the, and that Captain Ragnarok on that Asmo, I I I'm really excited to see what Asmo yeah. can do in this lineup because I think he's gonna be the one to turn the tide here. Indeed, already coming out the gate with 14 stacks from that Gluttony talent pick, and we, typically you know we have Monotic from the uh, Kilfoss. Storm Bolt from Murden, uh, you know, Wazafo from the Joe. So it seems so far everything seems to be relatively uh, expected. Yeah, Kael'thas going for that mana attic, uh, getting those regeneration globes, making sure that he can activate an arcane barrier, keep a little bit of protection. Yeah. Also implies that he's probably more likely looking for a living bomb build here, which I think with kind of the melee-ness <laughs> coming out of the Cassia and the Rhaegar and that uh, Joanna on Virtuoso seems like a really smart idea. Yeah, uh, so far it seems like already we are going to have a really quick camp coming out of Archetype there on the uh, bottom right on their side. And right now, it just seems like a bit of a four-man rotate coming out from uh, Archetype. And there's going to be a bit of an invasion f from Baby Makers on this. Oh, uh, Decker's a little too loose. Stony, Stony looks like he's going to go down. Stony drops there. Baby Makers trying to keep Archetype honest and loses their Deckard in the process. Not sure how I feel about that as far as uh, decision-making. 
and a little bit of a loss of XP there with no one soaking that middle lane to answer Malthale. Yeah, however, though, there could be a potential here for some kind of follow-up. Lawless oh, oh, coming look at that. in. Oh, just holding it. Lawless is like, I don't care about any of y'all. I'm standing my ground here. Just miss However, little Johnny Livelord. Malthale chunked him down enough to where he had to back away. They did secure the sapper camp, both of them, in fact. And there's going to be a strong push here on the bot lane. And, you know, it's just archetype. Just they had so much momentum there. A lot of damage coming out. Good job on, on by, by Lawlands to just really get in there and to try to con delay that as long as possible. But ultimately, he gets pushed off. And again, they're on the rotate like whoa right now, moving so quickly. And it doesn't seem like Baby Makers is able to answer. Yeah, right now it looks like they're just wor literally just working on getting as much stacks as as for Asmo as possible. He's already up at 76. Yeah. Still stacking. Uh, our top lane up there, Malthiel versus Dahaka, just pretty ho-hum. Dahaka is really, you know, fine to farm here, fine to go even because of having that global presence. Yeah. You know, he really always has an edge in that matchup. Um, and let's see, we have 10 seconds till, till these altars activate, and it looks like everyone's kind of preparing for a fight in the bot lane. Yeah, I'd agree. It looks like Malthiel and Dahaka are definitely going to be the ones capping. However, in this case, Baby Maker's... Can't have the advantage. Dahaka can bush stock in at a moment's notice. Yep, and he's going to immediately go for the bush stock. Right now, Mirrodin, Fireblade, holding it down, fighting that Joanna, just trying to keep them from channeling. Do whatever he can, uh, not taking that much damage. Oh, Decker with a beautiful stone curse there, just splitting the team in half. And they just go, that, that's the living bomb. Yeah. That is the power of living bomb in such a itty bitty living space. Wallen's actually for a while was zoning out that back line saying, hey, I don't care who you are. And those dunks just coming in. Lawlands really just kind of trying to juke them, but taking damage, getting pushed out. And, you know, Renoris and, and Virtuoso are just saying, come in here. Like, I dare you. Yeah. We have a Cassia. We know you guys have a, a, a Kael'thas, but he's too squishy to help you to push and, in. And, this is, and they just bully the objective. And this is one of those things, too, which I'm kind of worried for Baby Makers, is Sylvanas is also, also incredibly squish. So, you know, you can tell already, like... Almost all of Baby Makers was just whittled down to nothing. Even there, uh, that just that dunk uh, took quarter health away from Sylvanas. See, but with the Sylvanas pick, if you're Baby Makers, I'm not getting really worried right now. We do see Archetype rotating up to the mid, mid lane. Uh, uh, Malthale's coming down. Not sure if Mirrodin's going to see this coming or respect that. But, you know, if I'm Baby Makers, I'm not super worried. Uh, you know, Sylvanas took Dreadful Wake. That's going to help her freeze waves for seven seconds at a piece or a time, be able to really provide that wave clear. So she's really there. That So, you know, if they do lose those objectives, she can kind of stave off that bleed and really kind of stem the flow of the loss there and really kind of keep them yeah. in this game. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, the, I feel like uh, she could have late game potential in the sense, say, if Baby Makers wins an incredible team fight, they can push out lanes a hell of a lot quicker with the Sylvanas. And right now, actually, Rhaegar is sitting in this bush, just keeping an eye on Stony here. And is there going to be another invasion possibly onto this camp? I think I think you know Archetype sees that potential there, and they are going to push in. They're really going to challenge this, um, you know, because if they can get a pick here, it'll work well. But Baby Makers want to turn that around. Kale so really low. Cassie's going to finish oh, him wow. off. And you just, as a Kael'thas, you just can't be that close. That is going to be a risk here of him going Living Bomb build instead of going the Empowered Flame Strike. And uh, Archetype's just going to push in and say, hey, this cat belongs to us. Indeed. Now, Living Bomb build does have its place, but I feel like on this map in particular, especially with the composition they're going against, Flame Strike would have been a little bit better. He can sit a little bit, I mean, he can sit a little bit more in the back line. He can poke a little bit more. Well, the name of the game on this map is Disruption. And, you know, Kael, uh, Kael'thas going for the uh, the Flame Strike build, it would just give him the range to be able to help to assist with those interrupts. Yeah. But right now, it looks like Archetype, again, just going to keep them at bay. Asthma bringing these dunks and bringing a lot of damage in. And they push Baby Makers I back once again. Yeah, he's already nice. at almost 200 stacks ready. He's just two away from securing his uh, quest for Asmodam. Oh yeah, and you can tell that the baby makers are feeling the sting, uh, you know, because that every time they take, you know, that giant chunk, they stand, you know, in in the the path of that Asmo dunk, you know, you're starting to see those health 
uh, pulls chunk a little bit and, and get a little it's getting a little bit scary especially in yeah. such a cluster team now fight. this is one of the things i uh, like I'm, I'm really liking from archetype they're taking advantage of those bottom zapper camps a lot and the reason why they is are. bottom lane is the the most important lane in in this game in this uh in this map because if you secure both I mean, if, you, that... if you secure both bot hear me out though if you secure both bottom uh bell towers and you know, both t camps drop. You have the potential to get six free shots outside of objective onto your yeah. opponent. No, you are not wrong. It is, you know, wide, widely thought of as, you know, save bottom lane, save game, pretty much. Uh, because of the value that you can get uh, with those turret shots. Uh, and it's really, for me, it isn't just the control or the pressure in bottom lane. Again, archetype is rotating constantly, quick movements, quick decision making, and a yeah. unified front, and it doesn't look like Baby Makers is able to answer in time. Yeah, they definitely seem to be struggling right now. They they don't have their tens online yet. They definitely need to have them because I definitely feel like we're going to have some kind of invade potentially. But actually, Asma working on just finishing off that bottom bell tower. They're de yeah, it looks like. Uh, Asmo is just going to go for those Annihilation stacks and is really going to try to take this. They're, they might concede one of the top, but they're hoping that, you know, Renoris on Rhaegar yeah. uh, and that Odin on Malthay will be able to hold, as well as Virtuoso on that Joanna can hold long enough for them to travel the distance. I did like this play from Lonzo beforehand. He came in and started zoning out that Rhaegar. Ooh. Ball Lightning came in, though, from Cassia, weakened that back line so much. Oh Murray's team is going down. Pyroblast coming in on Malfail. He actually goes down. Baby Maker securing a kill. Daka Burrowing trying to get wow. away. The dunk coming in. Tony doing everything he can. You know, like just seeing his team getting chunked so hard. That Annihilation coming through. The Cassia damage. And he's like, wait, wait, hold on. Stay a while. Just listen to me for a moment. And Archetype's like, we're not trying to hear that at all. Comes yeah. in, cleans up. Uh, even though they, I feel like they, they're, they're down losing two members there during that fight. I think they did get two of the towers. Am I correct? Um, Look, no, they got the bottom, the bottom, uh, they got the bottom lane tower as well as the objective. So in my mind still kind of feels like a win. Yeah. Right now, if I was a uh, archetype, I would be feeling like in a great position. Now, granted baby makers show just there, even though they had the worst uh, trade that they can, Secure kills, which for baby makers is definitely what they need to have right now. But it's got to be more than securing kills. We need some strong decision making here, and we're going to need some a decisive plan. I need to see ba I need to see signs that baby makers are like, all right, you know what? Hey guys, so far, you know, hey, we're down a little bit, but we're not out of this game. And I need to just see some bold moves being yeah. made here. Because, you know, Archetype is really trying to push that lead. Yeah, it definitely makes you wonder what's in the mind of the captain right now, Wallens figuring out how to maneuver his team to a victory in this game one. Cassia zoning out right now. Annihilation coming. Cassia finishing off the Sylvanas. And the Cass Cassia's being a little disrespectful here. Fireblades is going to try to go in, and he, he has to, to pop the, the Avatar just to survive. Wasn't able to secure that kill because of the great Ancestral coming out of Renoris. Yeah, right now, just uh, Renoris have had some pretty good Ancestrals in this game. Yeah, and right now, you know, really, this is kind of Archetype's game, I think, mo or momentum, rather, to lose here. Yeah. Um, Lalan's stuck in this 1v2. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. Yep. Oh, uh, that ball lightning coming in, though. Man. That's one of the... Ragnaros is like... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's one of those things about Cassia, though, and it's something um, some players, you know, may have a hard time dealing with is that ball lightning. You... You either need to distance yourself from your teammates or you need to distance yourself from Cassie as quick as possible. It's just, it's the easiest ability to handle in the world. And, oh, wow, Kael'thas going down there. Malthael is just like, you know what? Die. And just ends him immediately popping that ultimate. Yeah, that last, to get the job last right's being used to secure that Kael'thas. Actually, had mind yeah, control I'd... being used, tried to be used on the Cassie to pull her into the... Uh, no man's land, but uh, Cassia quickly uh, scared her off from doing so. 
And really, you just see Archetype taking it very easy, very yeah. simple. You know, the last rights was just to secure that kill so that they could take the other objectives, other like the camps on the map, really keep pushing that XP lead. And I like to see this here. They're just keen, kind of keeping that pressure bot lane and then taking everything yeah. else on the map. And it, it's really, really smart now, macro play here coming out. Now, of this is one of those things I was talking about where, like we talked about earlier, where bottom lane such a priority because right now another three shots are getting ready to head in now baby makers is on the same talent tier for a little bit of time so if i was them i'd be trying to make a play trying to change up the pace of the game they have the chance here they're on even talent tiers i would like to see that the thing about making a play and putting that pressure dahak is going to come down here bush stock in the bot lane uh, getting a lot of damage Ball lightning coming in, though, whittling down. Oh, the stay well and listen. But Joanna actually wow. going down. Pyroblast being that used pyroblast. on Acacia. She has, she has seen better days, my friend. Malthea, though, chunking down both tanks. Last rage being used. Avatar had to be used to save himself. Oh, my goodness. Cassia getting mind control there. And actually, right here, Malthea was, standing there. Malthea was actually getting stunned out real bad, but he did manage to secure the kill on the Dahaka. And Tetra coming in on the Rhaegar. Uh, Cassia getting mind control there, just standing there by herself, like, why you gotta do me this way? As she watches that power blast slowly advance. Great D, but really not very effective for the baby makers. Archetype was still able to hold that. Um, although, baby makers might get the, both of the objectives here and probably rotate for the boss. I mean, if I was him right now, I would be trying to defend the boss. Because if they give up boss, if they give up, if, actually, if they give up this and. If they don't get that um, altar and they don't get the, you know, if they don't get the altar, they have to defend boss. Because that's a win condition for um, archetype. Well, there they are. Uh, they are. There is a talent tier discrepancy here, and just the hawk is just going to get shredded. Goes down instantly. Baby makers have to run. They have to. They have. Oh, stay a while and listen. Just try to to stave the bleeding and secure the exit. And they're just going to whimper home. Yeah, and now, like I said, Archetype is doing what they can here to secure this boss. Kael'thas is almost getting dunked to death by the Asmodan. And I... Th this is just a smart play here by Archetype. And I think game one here is going to Archetype. Fireblade doing what he can to try and maybe get in there. This is just... A, it's just not... I don't I don't know... I don't know if this is going to... This is going to do what, really what Baby Makers needs us to do. Fireblade is just the hero that we need, but definitely not the one that they deserved. <laughs> Going down there, and, and game you know, it was a great, it was a great play. And so we have a game one, Towers of Doom, which was actually a very heavily favored map for Archetype, based on their uh, round one statistics. Going once again to Archetype. I mean, it, to me, it just that all goes back to the macro play. Um, you know, Archetype really, from the beginning of the match, wanted to just set the pace there. Said, hey, we're going to rotate quickly. Yeah. We're going to move quickly. We're going to keep that bottom lane pressure. We're going to take picks, and we're never going to let up. And I just didn't see Baby Makers responding. Yeah, it's just, you know, I really just felt like their composition was just... It didn't... Like, the potential was there, it just it, it wasn't executed enough. I felt like Archetype had some really good rotations. They were constantly on the move. And so it was really well played from Archetype. Um, four kills from uh, Baby Makers to the 15 of um, Archetype. Um, you know, Cassie right here standing out. So is Malthail, really securing those kills. Um, you know, Deckard, though, had some good uh, stay a while and listens. Um, especially in that fight before um, before the boss, um, you know, before, before he had to use it to save his team um, down in the bot lane. Um, so, but yeah, let's work on getting into game number two, which is going to be on Battlefield of Eternity. It's going to be the map pick for Baby Makers. So, perhaps if I was Baby Makers right now, I'd say, hey, you know, that map was really good for Archetype. That's one of their better maps. Fine, you know, we're, this is going to be our map. We're going to show them how we run Battlefield of Eternity. Yeah, if I'm if I'm Baby Makers, I I am not concerning myself with what just happened. 
Um, I really, I hopefully we came in, we're prepared. Lies. We have a couple different strats or comps that we want to play here. And I would really just kind of focus on our game. Say, hey, all right, guys, we know what we're here for. We know what we can do. I uh, got off to a bad start. But now what I would do is retreat to that comfort, that comfort comp that safety comp that they feel comfortable running. It's hopefully specifically here on Battlefield. Now, as far as this map is concerned, um, can, taking into the HTC and the League play over phase two, uh, I'm expecting high priorities to be Maui Mirrodin, Li Ming. Uh, she's been picked in six games so far. Hanzo, of course, very popular on the pro scene and Blaze and Malfurion. Uh, most banned, Genji, Abathur, Sergeant Hammer, Urel, and Medivh. So we'll see. I do know that there are we have a couple Genji players here among the bunch, um, and Hanzo is always a fun pick. You know, you know, really good to bring out in most situations. So we'll yeah. see what we can do here. Yeah, um, yeah. One of the things I like. makers can come back. One of the things I'd like to see potentially grabbed up in this map would be Artanis, would be Avala. You know, they both have really great immortal burn. Um, Hanzo, you could also see Hanzo on this map. Um, you know, on these you just. You definitely want somebody that can burn the immortal in a big way. Um, so that's be something I'd be kind of expecting. Yeah, I mean, as far as I, I'm, I'm partial to the gray main. I'm a gray main boy. I'm a ranged assassin, and he's kind of like he was my my gateway into melee assassin. And so, you know, him great for this objective. Brings a lot of assassination pressure. Would be interesting to see that there. Um, you know. There are a lot of disruptive tanks and 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 bruisers that are really strong right now. Artanis would be great to see come out here. I would be I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Urel have uh, somewhat of a higher priority. So, I mean I don't know. I'm stoked. Or you know if if you're if you're baby makers, you could say hey, we could just go for the moon and 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 chug <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know? so we have both teams ready here for Battlefield of Eternity Game Two for this Division A West series. For this evening so without further ado really quick i just want to give a shout out to some of the people that just recently followed me so thank you wm stens slexia thank you karen for that host as well as yeah that's it and for course, just a little bit of, of a shameless plug um i will definitely not gawk at any more follows so if you do want to follow please feel free um and that said Dude, let's follow get the game started <laughs> no, and also shout out to Nexus Gaming Series for throwing on such an amazing tourney. Exciting uh, to have such great games for Heroes of the Storm on a lovely Saturday. So let's do it. Yeah, let's get it going. And we're working on getting into Battlefield of Eternity right now. And so this is the map pick for Baby Makers, which means that Archetype is going to get the first pick in this game. So let's see what they pick decide to pick up here. All right, so again, like I said, looking for Genji bands. I'm looking for Aberthur, Sergeant Hammer bands. Siege is great here. And then yeah, Urel, maybe Artanis, Medivh here as well. Um, and then that first, first band's going to go ahead and come on through. Now, do you – you've watched Baby Makers. Have you seen them rally in situations like this? What are you expecting to come out here? Well, I haven't seen Baby Makers play in an NGS setting I've seen them in an off-season tournament, and they, they didn't necessarily have the absolute greatest showing, but from the people that I do know on that team, I know that they are resilient and that I wouldn't expect them to go down with their uh, tails in between their legs. Well, it looks like they learned from that last game, respecting with that Asmodon band saying, hey, that was too strong. We let too much of that annihilation come through and annihilate our team. Yeah. We have to get rid of that. And so they respect that. Archetype going to go ahead and, and open us up with a Maeve ban as well. Which seems to be, uh, you know, so far the bands from, uh, so far the bands have been pretty consistent. Maeve, Genji, Asmo is the new addition. Respect ban. Towards uh, Ragnarok, who played the Asmo on Towers of Doom. And then again here, very popular pick on this map, Hanzo. Not surprised to see that pick. Genji allows just that backline access and a so much safety as far as a uh, 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 yeah. close-range assassin is concerned. You got to get rid of him right now. He's just been so strong. Now, one of the things I would actually would have liked to see maybe was, um, wow. was, the, was a Cassie band perhaps, but... However, also in my notes here, as much as Baby Makers was a fan of Deckard, so is Archetype. So they opted for their first that, pick to be Deckard Kane. 
That is prime strategy. They go in, they were like, okay, we, 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 we see you. We see that your Deckard was a prize strong pick. We're going to go ahead and take that away from you. What do you have? And they're saying, we have, we have Jimmy with all that paper and white man with all that sauce. So like, yeah, white man response here. White man right now has the capacity to soak up tons of damage. I come to say good yes. night. Um, <laughs> but archetypes like, all right, Lee Ming going to bring in heavy heavy range damage so they're like yeah. okay we're, we're literally gonna just seed you yeah we're gonna seed you down and push it and we're gonna take your objective bringing a mirrored in so he has a lot of that sustain can just kind of pull back from the fight and heal and up and then we actually I have we have a respect ban on that malfail actually coming out they don't want to deal with him a second time i i don't know how respect i feel that ban is um because the malfail did do a quite a lot of work but he was also kind of separated. It's 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 very wise. I wonder what that means though. They're getting rid of percent health damage. Are we thinking? Am I going to see a shell gal cheese? Oh, give you it know, to I, me, please. I would, you know, maybe I haven't seen white main with a chogal, but what it would indicate to me is that they're looking for maybe a double front line to protect their back line that much more. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't be against seeing a, a there's an Artanis like I said, he's really good at immortal burn. I would I would be right against now. seeing a Joanna here. I wouldn't be against seeing a Diablo. Wow. Okay. So they're going to go in for a Jaina. I, I don't know how I feel. They're going to leave that flex for their main tank. Um, very interesting pick. Jaina's actually very popular in the HGC, bringing a lot of range uh, with her frost shards, as well as chilling, yeah. applying chill to everything that she, <laughs> everything <laughs> the light touches. Yeah. Uh, um, she slows down considerably. So, um, that's a very interesting response. I, I wonder how Archetype you know, is going to... Oh. However, oh. however, though, Greymane has one of the worst win rates in the game right now. Uh, and, but and, you have to take this in the current context. White Mane is squishy, has no mobility. Jimmy hurts a lot, stings like a bee, but he's squishy like a butterfly. And then Jaina is going to be at a disadvantage before she gets that ice block. This is an early game yeah. snowball comp that Archetype is picking. And Joanna here I do enjoy as well. Adds an extra bit of beef. Um, what I was going to say, though, is that um, you know, Jaina's slows are just going to tie directly into Rainer's damage with that ace in the hole tower. True. And, um, True. I feel kind of right now, based on what I'm looking at, um, I feel Baby Makers has the stronger Immortal Burn, which is actually, oh, wow. oh, okay. which is like, Grey Man can burn, but right now, like some of the two picks you're going to see a lot of, at least from the games I play, you're going to see Artanis, you're going to see Vala. Um, you know, they have an Artanis, his amateur opponent chunks down that, uh, the immortal, like it's no one else's business, and so right now I kind of feel at least in the early game, um, baby makers should be able to secure an immortal as long as they, um, you know, take their fights uh, carefully and just protect their backline. I think if I'm archetype, I just go okay. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna send four people in. We're gonna just siege you up. And we're going to have Grey Mane go off by himself, and he's going to do all that damage that we need to get done. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that would be the the smartest way for them to go, uh, to just kind of do that four and one. But we'll see. We'll see how they how they split that. Um, but yeah, to me, I think – or, you know, you could just bring Grey Mane along for the ride, and he can literally just grill and kill all day long. All right, so here we go. Coming into game number two. In this Div A West series between Baby Makers and Archetype, on the left hand side, representing Baby Makers, we're going to be having on the Artanis, Mr. Fireblade. We're going to have Slobo Laggins on the Joanna. We're going to have White Mane played by Stony, Tina by Amy Wan Kenobi, and their Captain Wallens on good old Jimmy. And for your red team, we're going to have Solo on that Li Ming, uh, Virtuoso on that Muradin, Renoris on Deckard, and Captain Ragnarok on the Greymane with Odin coming in on Arthas to bring a little bit more CC to the fight. Yeah, I kind of felt like Arthas would be a, a good uh, solo laner here. Um, it could have been Greymane or him. However, like I was saying already, you know, Ace in the Hole picked up by Jimmy, so they're expecting to try and take advantage of the uh, the slows that Jane is going to provide with her uh, spell damage. 
Yep, for the kids back home, Ace in the Hole uh, gives Rainer 15% more damage if he attacks things that slow. And like I said, However... Jane applies chill to everything and slows everything. So great damage combo here. And baby makers are going to get really, really yeah. chunked out with some of that early AoE damage coming out of our Yeah, and I d yeah uh, Jimmy was actually got uh, rooted there by Deckard and uh, Greymane trying to secure the kill, but the power of White Mane showed herself. And, well, yeah, White Mane is a great, great Thoroughput healer. And um, now I didn't catch it on uh, on the camera because you're paying attention here. There's this uh, lovely stuff going on bot lane. But it seemed Arthas decided to kill uh, Artanis. And then uh, a tower, or some, probably a tower, decided to kill Arthas in turn. So an interesting trade yeah. out there. Really aggressive trades going up top. Not really surprised Artanis is really strong. And... Our Arthas, uh, you know, is a pr provides a decent amount of response, yeah. being able to slow and pr bring that AOE damage. But right now, it's you know, it's just pretty slow back and forth, just trying to kind of ping and poke at each other and see yeah. what damage six. Yeah, right now, uh, Murden actually getting chunked down just uh, ever so slightly, but he's going to be able to heal up. You know, especially with this. And trade. again, archetypes rotating first, rotating more quickly zoning baby makers out and now being even more effective at it having the Deckard Stone uh, Scroll of Stone Curse, it's going to be amazing Yeah, but, uh, baby makers being able to clear up this camp you know the thing for White Man, you know, just one of the things that she just does really great is her healing goes out the more damage that's being dealt out, so I have literally, uh, I'm going to give a shout out to my boy Smitty Werbin from the other night we were playing, and uh, I watched him literally eat damage from five different heroes and survive. That's how. <laughs> so, I would say what's significant here with that group, that white main is because and I'd also point, point out that we have two members. Uh, we have white main and gray main. All we need is Blizzard to give us a black main, and we can have a party. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, the white main is going for the the martyrdom build here so she is focusing on her q uh getting 30 percent extra damage each time she yeah. is desperate so i'm um, really going for mana um conservation here with the white yeah. main build now it seems baby makers are going to be on the defense law one's actually getting a little bit out of place Woo! murden trying to in jump in jane is actually going to be the first one to go and one of the things I don't like already is that Artanis needs to be with his team. He is the burn for the immortal. And so really He's not able to get away really with the, the, the Arthas up top, so I can understand, especially with Arthas looking it looks like he is winning that trade, so you know, as long as he stays there and keeps that pressure on, it's gonna be hard for Odin to pull away. Now, I feel like now Baby Maker's best bet is to just try and chunk this down as best as quick as possible. Now, if you look right, you, you know, can see the damage coming in from Baby Makers on that Immortal. They just, they did a significant amount of damage to that in a very short amount of time. Um, so, but yeah, I would never question their draft as far as effectiveness. But yeah, I, it's again, man, they look, they look so slow on the uptake. Yeah. So let's see how this defense goes. First, Immortal is going to be on the bot lane. You know, we got a. Uh, Joanna up in the top lane now against Arthas. We have a swap coming Ooh. in on the Deckard. But right now he's in basically what would be no man's land. Is he going to be able to get away? He does barely. Wallen's using his, uh, I can't remember the name of that ability for Raynor. I think it's penetrating, penetrating shot. Penetrating rounds. Yes. Uh, so, like, I want to give some props to Fireblade because, like, he's... Even on this bruiser, and, and, and Artanis is very tanky for a bruiser, he's just showing great frontline chops. He's really there to peel for his backline. And he was a standout for me in the last match for Baby Makers. And again, I think he's he's playing really, really well here. Um, again, only down by a, about a level here, uh, six to seven. So they're not out of this game. They just really have to tighten up and and answer these rotations as as archetype goes for that bottom keep again and actually bottom is camp. a fireblade maybe looked like he was trying to get in there there we oh, may wow. actually getting caught up oh, potentially no. you know what though i feel bad though because the backline is in trouble funds being used 
I, I don't feel bad. I think that was a, a really interesting choice. Uh, even though, I mean, I just complimented him because he ended up so far forward. There was such a gap that his backline couldn't really cross to get there and, yeah. and assist him and save him. And it was just a neat, itty bitty living space. So I, I don't know if that was the, the smartest tactical move, but here they are trying to defend this, uh, this, uh, this keep here. Yeah, this, uh, this first fort here in a bit of danger, fort. most likely going to go down. There we go. We have first fort down in the And game. it drops. Mirrodin is not respecting Virtuoso. Uh, we have and a flip coming Hardling on. gets the swap. And Mersteve does go down. Uh, great, great play there to get that last minute swapped. Keep him in. Keep him in there so the team could turn around and pile on. Having that Rainer there, having yeah. that Jaina there, big burst available. Very smart and play. And if they can turn, it, if they can turn this into two kills, this would be huge. Well, right now, it looks like they're trying to focus on a mortal burn. I don't blame them. Nice. Nice. It's a very smart move. Knowing that they have the superior damage output, adjusting after that first immortal, very smart move by the baby makers. Yeah, if I was them right now, it's exactly what they need to do. I mean, they're already structurally behind. They're over a level behind. Um... Now they have to defend. They have to hold here, and that is where I'm worried. Um, well, I feel... Joanna's yeah. going in. She separated. She's too far forward all by herself. Yeah, but the thing about Joanna is she's so tanky. She can afford to do that and just really try to zone out that damage. Because right now, Artanis is just burning that down. And he should be able to. Even if he sticks it, they're going to get the Immortal. Jo but they don't want to die here. We don't want to mass feed after taking yeah. that objective. And I'm not sure that they're going to be able to get out without massive casualties. Already two lost. Jaina's running for her itty-bitty life. I hope where's her dad's boat when she needs it. And uh, baby makers are going to retreat. Uh, kind of heal up here. And honestly, with those two deaths, I don't know how much value they're really going to get out of this immortal now. You know, because Greymane also really, yeah. really destroys and demolishes this objective. I don't think they're going to get tons of value out of it, but it's better for them to not get tons of value out of it rather than. Archetype getting it, if that makes sense. Now, granted, the trade out for well, of course. the trade out for them losing those uh, those two heroes definitely wasn't good. You know, but it gives them a chance to try and soak ten, which is exactly what they need. They're trying to put some pressure on the bot fort instead, which Arthas is trying to come down to respond to. I just, I just, I just question if if they're really yeah. They're not. They're not really doing much to slow the momentum of archetypes, because um, like while they're taking that camp, archetypes have already taken that camp and they're pushing the fort. Uh, it's like it's just like it just feels like baby makers are always just a little bit like one step behind. Yeah. I really like their mechanics here. I I like their draft, but I think you know one takeaway I see here is we we definitely have to work on that macro play and. And better vision and quicker calls. Yeah, so some of the things I see from the ultimates coming out, at least from uh, baby makers, we're gonna have Hyperion. You know, we're gonna have the. Oh my gosh, archetypes flanking. Baby makers are coming in, trying to kill. Yeah, actually, Ooh, Lee Ming getting swapped out. Ring of Frost being used. Oh, the ring. Lee Ming. Oh my god. Purifier beam being used on that Deckard. And this is a. That was a really good play from uh, wow. from Baby Makers. Hyperion coming in saying, "Hey, but yeah, like I, was... I mean, Amy Wan Kenobi needs to change the name to Global Warming because just like out here dropping glaciers on them, having to retreat now as archetypes just trying to turn this fight. I think really, I think Wayne, Wayne, in Wayne trouble, is in a dangerous way. Wallens is in trouble. He is going to go down. He's down. Wow. You know." How did that go? Where, where was the where was the breakdown there? Um, Artanis, I didn't see how Artanis said, but he did die first. Um, and you and you can't do that before the objective. Like, again, another kind of cardinal, like a uh, 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 an unbreakable yeah. rule that you, you that is broken is that you cannot die, because you just it's like it's not only is it a staggered staggered respawn, but it just sets you so far back. I'm being able to contest here. They're looking to just get as much damage out as they can and then try to defend hard. Yeah, if I was them, I'd be trying to defend. Granted, they have a talent tier. Uh, they're about to be a talent tier behind. But actually, right now, it's on their side. They could potentially burn nope, and they're race. they're just going to go for the burn. 
archetypes are like, yeah, we're happy. We uh, we have more structures down. We have more experience. We're up right now. And yeah, sure. If you want to let us have this, we'll take it. And we'll take the camp too. Got to get that pretty clean. Yeah, archetype. Fall back, take the camp here. Archetype right now, I would just say, based on what I'm seeing, has the superior uh, communications. Their macro game's just on point. Um, it just seems like you know they're they're a practice team. It seems like they they kind of know the meta. They kind of know at least how they want to play that the meta. Yeah. Uh, and and they've it, it seems that they kind of have a clear understanding of their win conditions and they're playing towards them. Yeah. So right now we have the uh, third immortal of the game coming out. And already, Slobo Baggins Ooh. was kind of oh well. Iron gosh. Skin was being used, Lord Nato, Hyperion, a lot of ultimates being used. Right now, we had Crimson Aegis being used. Ring of Frost. Oh, that ring. Ring of Frost going out. Oh, my out. lands. <laughs> this is actually, Jeez. this actually isn't good. This could be a keep or even maybe game ending right now. Amy is like, I will not go quietly into that good night. Just drops the, the ring. However, Greyman was looking to come in for the Ragnarok kill. Ragnarok is just like... I'm, I, I, don't, I don't care about your rings. Goes in for the assassination. Yeah. I don't think Virtuoso's getting out of here. Oh, maybe? Wow. There, There is just disrespect. Yeah, well, Alan's actually uh, got taken out by Li Ming. That's being played by Solo. Ooh. Solo taking out Gina as well. And right now, wow. Fireblade, Fireblade doing what he can to defend his keep. Man, I just... I, Where's, I, I want to just be like, I feel like someone needs to tell Fireblade, just like send Zappy Boy in so he can just be like, <laughs> like live another day. Because he goes in real hard. And sometimes he's, he's willing to sacrifice his life for his team. And, and I think that's great. Um, but right now, I, if he had dropped, that would have been devastating. So Yeah. I mean, he has our chance, though. So he might, he might be feeling the, uh, the urge to give his life for ire. I don't know. But. Um, you know, the one thing I'd probably say about the swap side, I'd like to see more of, like, swaps on, like, Deckard or something, or, like, a Grey Man, because Li Ming, you know, she has the capacity to at least try and get some escape with Teleport, but De I feel like Deckard would be, like, a really great swap target if, you know. Well, you know, landing Prisms is a fickle mistress. Like, it's very <laughs> difficult because it's a very, very hard skill shot to land. Very short um, distance that it comes out. It's a pretty slow, and you have to, you have to hit it at the at the top of a, like a parabolic arc so i mean there's geometry involved it's tough yeah it's, but you know that's what make that's what separates the great players player tennis players from just you know the average art tennis players uh, i don't like this i think baby makers needs to approach in a different angle again archetypes really they understand they have a a talent lead here and they're they're really pushing their weight around right now we actually have uh Burn coming out from Baby Makers. However, you know, Archetype burning it down that much faster, and Talent here behind already. Um, they're not going to win this burn race, but they're going to just try and chunk it down as quick as they can. Yeah, they they know they they can't they know they can't win the burn, but they also realize that thirteen to sixteen could be a devastating fight. That could be game. So they don't feel comfortable yeah. taking taking a, uh, a team fight here are going to be content to just say, hey, uh, can't get caught, though. But just going to say, hey, we'll just burn as much, reduce that shield so that we can D up, kill the immortal as quickly as possible, and hopefully mitigate as much damage and get a swap. Ooh, a little too short yeah, in that right. swap. Rain is trying to help as much as Rain possible. Rain Frost coming out. in, though. Hyperion being used. Rain is going Ooh, down. Hyperion value. Jane is going down. Greymane goes oh, down. Oh, my gosh. You know, and actually, you know, even though the trade out was like less, I feel like it gives baby makers a chance to kind of blow it up. I think, well, I mean, with Jaina's ring going down, getting massive amounts of damage, and then Artanis following that up there uh, with the pulse purifier beam, and then yeah. getting the kill on Greymane with the purifier, like it's that's the that's the best case scenario. I mean, it only gets better if they would have lived. We could have. Kept one of them, preferably Artanis. Yeah. The keep's gonna go down. Immortal still push in. It looks like archetypes are gonna just be fine for that. They're ahead. They they want to play this out slow and clean, and they're just gonna fall back and kind of reposition, take everything else on the map. Yeah, I don't blame them for playing safe right now. I mean, they they have like almost three. They have like about, almost a three level lead. Um, 
you know, they, they don't need to risk anything because right now the the, the, the cards oh. are all in their favor. And it looks like right now. Party Bush, party Bush. Looks like right now. It's going down. Yeah, it looks like right now um, Virtuoso there on the Arthas, or actually the Meriden rather, um, you know, looking to take the invasion on the Bruiser camp. Um, Baby Makers doesn't have 16, but, you know, I feel like they just, they, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't ignore this. it, though. Ring of Frost coming they in on that back it. line. And I really do feel like Amy Wan Kenobi there has been wow. making great rings. However, White Mane, just getting evaporated. White Mane goes down, Joe goes down, Artanis goes. Wow. And it's just again, that's why they they couldn't fight into this. They they have so much to lose. And if I'm archetype, I rotate. Death timers are too so, too so long that we just push in and we, and we we try to take this. We try to end here. Um, yeah, this, this I should think, be game right here. I think watching archetype and their decision to like push out and be slow and make and make safe plays, it's really just showing kind of their discipline and. I think Baby Makers played very, very well here over these two matches, but we really have to give out a shout to Archetype for such clean gameplay, and that's gonna be a G, G. Yeah, so actually we're going to have a domination in favor of Archetype um, in this series. And so with that being said, we'll take a quick look at the match summary, and we will try to get Ragnarok, the captain of Archetype, in for an interview. So yeah, what do you think, man? What do you think about this play? What do you think about these picks? Where where where's your mind at after such a a great a great set of games? I mean, kind of like you know, when it comes to when it comes to archetype, um, you know, they just they played phenomenally well. Um, I can it kind of almost like at least in the game one, I could, I just kind of want to say that maybe baby makers didn't necessarily do as much of their homework. They let one of uh, Archetype's probably strongest maps come out. They let two of their strongest picks come out. Um, and in the second game, you know, I feel like they had some potential. I feel like, you know, um, there was potential moments where Fireblade maybe went a little bit too ham, you know, trying to secure a swap, trying to make a play happen. Um, you know, and I just I feel like Archetype just responded really well to the play style of Baby Makers with constant rotations, not being afraid to invade, um, you know, just a slew of other things. So let me work on getting a hold of Ragnarok here and see if we can get an interview. Oh, okay. Just stand by a moment, people. So, what about you? What, what's your commentary there from uh, from that series? So, as far as I'm concerned, sorry, what was that? Then hurt quite a lot. Um, we, we can't have that happen anymore. Um, and they're just like, okay, we're going to respectfully ban that out. Um, you know, we're also, I like the adjustment that I saw coming out of archetype where they decide, okay, all right, well, we're going to take that decorate from you. We know you like to play that. We know that's a comfortable pick for you. We know that you want this. Um, we're going to go ahead and just take that away. And so I thought that was really, really smart coming out of the archetype side. Um, I think Baby Makers looks like a strong squad, and I, I think there's a yeah. lot of good potential there. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do in the future. All right, so um, we do have our interview ready. Uh, Ragnarok is actually sending Virtuoso from their team for the interview, and so he's waiting for us in the lobby. So uh, let's go meet him there. He... All, right. All right. See you there. Hello, Virtuoso. Yo, guys. How's it going? It's going pretty good, man. Those are some uh, very intense games to watch, and... It's kind of yeah. So let's just start out. Let's just start this off with um, just kind of based on the research that I did at least for your round one. It seemed like round one, um, pick wise and map wise, couldn't have gone any better for you. You got Towers of Doom, which seems to be one of you guys' uh, strong maps. You got the the Cassia, which uh, you know so had a hundred percent win rate um, with, um, and then you got the Malfeo as well. So. 
just kind of like what what are your thoughts and um you know about the series overall at like you know like how did you did, did, did you guys perform to your expectation um what was kind of your guys thought going into these games yeah I, I think game one was pretty clean from us i mean as you said we got our comfort uh not much more to say there uh i, th I think the only thing that was a little different for us was the Rhaegar healer instead of deckard but uh yeah it was clean i fed once in a team fight bottom that was really the only thing i want back i guess yeah, and I actually noticed that in the game too, that adjustment of you know, you're like, okay, well, you're going to ban out our Asmo. Uh, we're just going to take your Deckard. Did you do a little bit of scouting and where you're like, okay, that's a strong pick of theirs. We should take that to cripple them here? Oh, it, it, um, well, Asmo, you're asking if, if we took the Asmo to deny from them? Yeah, yeah. If you, well, if you took, yeah. It, so, like, when the Asmo Den was banned in game two, Mm. Um, like, what was your thoughts there as far as like adjusting to try to to? Oh, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Because yeah. um, I noticed that you took the Decker, and I was like, oh, that was a very interesting adaptation. Oh, I I see where you're going now. Um, yeah, I I, I think we just value Deckard very highly. Is the short mm. answer to that? I mean, okay. Uh, if anything, we were kind of surprised they didn't ban the Asmo game one. It was it was it was a nice surprise, but um. Yeah, when when we got Deckard, it was it was just a a strong pick, really strong on every map, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, I would also say, you know, it definitely was one of your other uh, notables I was expecting to see, but actually both teams in that case uh, seem to have a strong favorite to, towards Deckard. So I guess it absolutely. I guess it just pays homage to the man with the Roger Cube. True, true story, <laughs> man. <laughs> So, like, as far as getting, you know, playing in the in the tourney, you know, really wanting to do your best w w in in GS, like, is there a philosophy or how do you how do you? It, or I guess a better way to say this is, it was clear that your team moved very cohesively. You moved as one. You moved quickly and very decisively. How do you guys facilitate that that unity, that camaraderie, that solidarity that translates over into like quick macro play? That's a good question, man. Um, yeah, it's basically just trust in each other at this point. Uh, it's, it was kind of interesting when uh, this season, uh, I'm a new addition to the team and so is Renoris, so it took a little bit of time for us to congeal. But now we, we have this good trust going, and if somebody calls something, we all go for it. It's just yeah. uh, we, we have this understanding of, like, even if it's not 100% the correct call, if we're all doing it together, there's a way better chance of things working out for us yeah indeed uh, that was one of the things i uh, i actually mentioned in game two was it just seemed like there seemed to be um stronger communication that's really coming out from your team uh, that was one of the things i did notice um but yeah just um just overall uh you guys are on top of Div A west um i'm definitely uh automatically expecting to see you in the playoffs and you know, I really do feel like you guys have the potential to even go up to uh, Heroic Div uh, next season, just kind of based on your uh, performance so far this season. Um, Definitely. We we feel that way as well. We're we're just, uh, for for now, we're just trying to keep our heads down, play our best game, improve our draft, you know, just yeah. all the nuts and bolts. Yeah, man. Well, the, the practice, the camaraderie, the friendship, and the discipline is on display easily in your maps and your gameplay. Um, really excited to see you guys. So excited that you guys are on top and wishing you all the best in all your games in the future. Awesome. Thanks so much, man. All right, man. So yeah, that would be uh, it for the interview. Do you happen to have uh, any shout outs you'd like to give free go virtuoso? Yeah, of course. Uh, shout outs to my team. Of course, we played really well today. Uh, carried me after I fed game one and game two, actually. Uh, so thanks to that. Uh, shout outs to uh, Archetype. It's a gaming community founded by Echo Spawn a little while ago. He's trying to make this name a little bigger, and we're happy to be repping it for him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, shout-outs to Little B, of course, as always. <laughs> as always. All right, man. Well, great games and GG. All right. Thanks. See you, man. All right. So there we go. That was our interview with Virtuoso, one of the team members of Archetype. Um, and they close out the series night with a domination against the baby makers. Um, so with that being said, just, uh, at least for my final thoughts, it was just, it was some great games, some great play. Um, there was really some interesting, uh, interesting and exciting moments. 
um, during that during those series. Um, what about you, uh, Terry? Do you happen to have uh, any final thoughts, uh, any shout-outs of your own you'd like to give? No, super exciting uh, game there, super exciting match. Really loved uh, to see the the hard work coming through on Archetype side. Shout-outs to Baby Makers. Shout-outs to Fireblaze for some great uh, uh, tank and uh, bruiser play coming out of that, that Artanis. Um, some really, really, really good play. Um, some great white main play as well today. I love to see that. So we had some great matches. Really excited to be here. So excited to get the opportunity to cast with you, Yep. I feel very <laughs> honored to have such a, uh, a seasoned uh, veteran invite me here and uh, allow me to, to, to co-cast with you here. And thanks to NGS for not only throwing a, a rad tourney that really helps to grow the Heroes of the Storm uh, community and support it, but for also allowing us the opportunity to, to cast some fun games on a Saturday. So yeah. Thanks yeah, so much. Uh, just one of the things I'd like to kind of say is uh, I appreciate the compliment about calling me a veteran. I'm actually only a caster hopeful for NGS. This is actually this is actually my sixth game tonight. Uh, so hopefully, because um, there's a sixth game before they determine whether or not you can be a caster for NGS. So hopefully, I make the cut. I really I've really enjoyed uh, my time so far casting for NGS. Um, and then the final shout out I'd like to give tonight is um, I know for some of you guys um, that have known me for a while, uh, you guys knew me as Tall Yep for a long time. Um, and I was really big about Tall for a long time. Um, just kind of one of the big announcements I want to put out there for everybody is, uh, you know, um, myself and a lot of the uh, Tall guys that were in here as a storm, you know, we decided that it would be in the best interest for, you know, all of us in our, you know, section of the world of Here's a Storm to, uh, you know, do our own thing. And so, you know, just big shout out to our new thing, Anomaly Gaming. And uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the potential we can come up with in there. So, you know, if anybody's ever looking for, uh, you know, a cool place to hang out, queue up some games, whether it be some random events, just make some new friends, or even if you're looking for competitive play, you know, we cater to all sorts of life when it comes to Heroes of the Storm team. So, um, yeah, it'd be my final shout out. And with that, uh, we're going to end the stream and uh, just a final last shout out to Archetype for their amazing 2 0 victory against Baby Makers. Um, definitely um, looking forward to seeing uh, them in the playoffs and how they do. So, with that said, um, everybody have a good night and thank you for coming out, guys. Be well. <laughs>